What's up, everybody? Hello. Welcome back to the History for Fools podcast with Butch Escobar, myself, Felipe Esparza. This is a wrap-up show, like from uh, the Latin cinema. What can you say? There's not that much representation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to know something, dude? Bro, I remember... Go, anyways, go ahead. I had a friend who uh, is a film major. And I, I think he went to Berkeley. I have a friend Berkeley. who's a corporal major. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, those are different guys. Um, he, I think he went to Berkeley, some big school. We play video games every night. People are starting a Berkeley drinking game already. And he's like, uh, I know, good, here we go. Uh, and he goes, um, he goes, what are you guys working on? And I was like, oh, we're working on uh, Latin, Latin cinema and stuff. Oh, you told age. me about that fool. And he goes... Dude. He didn't even know. I, they never talked about it in our courses. And that's how, under, under because you, you said underrepresentation, that it, to me is like, dude, that is how underrepresented Bro, we fucking really even are. Even the, the I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's all Latino or Latinx film buffs, you know, who go out to study film, they always, they always fail to recognize the movies that we recognize like right. Boulevard Nights um, Bound by Honor Blood in Blood Out American Me it's like they want to forget about those type of movies and focus on a movie that had a message you know like the ones that there's you know all the good movies right you can't you can't you can't um, forget about those type of movies the well, gangster dude, movies dude isn't I don't know because you know more about this than I do but What's up with uh, Blood In, Blood Out? It's like, isn't it trying to be like suppressed by Disney? Like Disney bought it, owns it, and isn't pr producing it or putting it up anywhere. It's just sitting somewhere. Like you can't get even. Like I could. Like it's hard to find copies of of it. Like you gotta. I get know, DVDs. man. Like, like I, I, I was, I was supposed to, since <coughs> Blood In, Blood Out was a Disney movie. I thought that when I got the Disney Channel, it'll tell me, hey, since you like Mandalorian. Maybe you'll like Blood In, Blood Out. <laughs> if you like uh, stories about a guy raising a kid by himself, <laughs> maybe you like Blood In, Blood Out. <laughs> if you guys like Mandalorian, who is about a, ba about a baby that's growing up in this world that's unknown to him, maybe you'll like Miklo, Blood In, Blood Out. Right. <laughs> yeah. One dude. thing I, we learned that we forgot to tell you guys last time, we didn't even know about this. But we don't even know where to find it right now to let you know where it is. So you got to find it on your own and figure out this riddle. Yeah, exactly. Um, I stumbled upon Blood In, Blood Out, the scene where, here's a scene, Philip will show it, the scene where, um, where Benjamin Bratt, um, Damon Chapa, Blood In, uh, Miklo, and um, Jesse Borrego, um, Crucito, they get pulled over by the police officers, and they get away by they get away by Crucito, was played by Jesse Borrego. He says, "This guy's a champ, eh? He's the the black oh, the yes. black rooster, blah 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 blah, right?" So, so so I, I, that scene was a lot of the scene from Blood and Blood Out. It was taken from another movie, which by the, by the time I'm. By the time I finish the sentence, Philip will have it up there. But let's remember I showed it. I showed yeah, it what's to you? the name of that movie? Do you remember? No, but it's up there already. It's so. up there already. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Because um, when you but said it that, felt, it felt weird to forget about that. Ah, oh, bro, when you said that to me, and like, because there's so many things, man. And I will say this because this is the wrap up show, so you know, it's like, um, you know, we 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 come up with an idea. And then me and Felipe buy books on it. And we sometimes we share the books and go, this is what I'm reading. And then sometimes we'll just start reading stuff and then we'll compare information before we do this. Um, so we're deep diving right before, like a month before, a few weeks. That's why it's, sometimes it takes long to do these episodes too because we have to like, we have to like find the information, read it, go through it, and then talk about it and then do the episodes. But the other thing is, is that once we're done with the episodes, it's kind of a relief because we finished it. But then in a few weeks, people start sending us stuff or we start remembering. And it's like, fuck, why didn't we get see that? Why didn't we put that in there? And that's one of those things, man, where I was like, man, 
That would have been such a good thing to fucking have and talk about. But I'm glad that we found it. Yeah, man. We also forgot that movie by Edward James Almost Dead in the Liver. <gasps> How the fuck did we not talk about that? Yeah, dude. man. Because they killed on South Park with that episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot reach these kids. Do you you never do saw you? it? No. Oh, no. What? Oh, what, what what's that little chubby dude name from South Park? Cartman. Phil, you saw the episode, right? Oh, my God. It's funny, right? Fucking Cartman dresses up like Edward just almost. <sighs> no, Cartman gets kicked out of the school for being an idiot. Cartman, he gets kicked out of the school, I guess, right? So he gets sent to an inner city school. But when he gets to the inner city school, he pretends to be the substitute teacher. <laughs> so <laughs> he starts dressing like Eric James almost like in Sand the Liver. And then he and then he starts teaching them. But he's teach he's talking a total Pocho Chicano accent from the sixties, bro. Oh no. He goes, Maria, so he got let me tell you that Maria, you know, then <laughs> then, he, then, he, then 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 when they, they don't get it, he's outside the class. He goes, How can I reach these kids? <laughs> Oh, God, dude, I'm going to watch that as soon as this is over, bro. Uh, dude, we have to watch that clip as soon as this We is will, over. bro. As soon as this wrap That's up, we're going to watch it, and they come back with pirates. Bro, I've never fucking saw, I've never heard this before. Bro, right now, oh, when you say you never watched it, people, uh, are you giving people feel? I can't believe both have never seen it. Yeah. As white as he is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody's going to say that. <laughs> Fuck you guys, but you're right. <laughs> well, I watch a lot of South Park, but, but I know so you're gonna. Much. I know, I know you're gonna, when you watch it, you're gonna die. Oh so man! So that was that. It was James Olmos who did a bunch of movies. <sighs> Don't forget about Holy Scarface, shit. half of the cast. That's right, dude. Scarface. Angel Zalazar, you gotta pay him in cold. I think we forgot podcast. a lot, dude, because we did we didn't talk about the Mandalorian, or we didn't talk about what's that new Star Wars one. Uh... Uh, with what's his name in it? Andorian. Um, Andor. Andor. With uh, what's that guy's name? Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera. Diego he, Luna. Diego Luna, and he's in a lot of the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. And Star Wars does a. I feel like the Star Wars series, like now, does a lot of. It does a really good job with Latin people in it, because yeah, it, man. I think the new Star Wars series likes to go to Mexico and get actors. That are far away instead of finding them right next door when they're Where right We right. have them here. We yeah. have here in LA. <laughs> you know what? I you have... know, I went to an audition today, bro, and I went, they were talking about Diego Luna being cast, who lived in Mexico, right? Right. Because now when I go to LA, I, I did a, I did a, I did a, a <laughs> fucking audition today. I did an audition <laughs> at this morning at 8 in the morning, right? Before I got here. And, um, oh, man. I, I, right after, you have to slate where you're from, right? So I said, um, Felipe Esparza, six foot one, Los Angeles, California. So I'm pretty sure, but as soon as they see Los Angeles, you know, they have a party, they probably have a big budget. Right. So then, you know what? Let's get the guy who looks Mexican from New Zealand. <laughs> Bro, that's how I feel it is right now. Cause like my, my girlfriend was pointing out that the little girl in The Last of Us, is uh, from England. She's black, right? No, 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 no. She's a little white girl, but she's from England. And if, if you notice, all almost all the main characters in Apocalypse movies are from e England or Australia. And I was like, dude, these guys are taking our fucking job. I'm serious, bro. Then you you, you see like um, you see British actors, every um, Australian actors playing. Trailer trash characters in America. I don't. Get I'm it. Not, come on, bro. We we have Theo Vaughn, bro, who's already looks trailer trash. You know what I mean? Right. He can play that character. He totally. already because he already looks like Tom Brady with cerebral palsy and shit. <laughs> For real, it's like you got Tom <laughs> Hardy. You got Tom Hardy. He's British. <laughs> He's playing um. Redneck people. Right. But you got Theo Vaughn. He's a real redneck, bro. Like, straight up, trailer right. trash. He talks about borrowing his brother's sweaters and shit. Right. Grew up knowing no Mexicans. Right. You can't get any trailer trash than that. Than that. But, but they got to go to Australia and find a, 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 an actor with, who's never seen the hood. 
I think, bro, honestly. The Outback trailer it, trash. Like, like it's, it's funny that we're making fun of it, but honestly, I think there's like a really absolutely shitty reason for That's it. That's a good clip to cut up. Do you think that they actually pick those people because they have British accents and that it makes but them the, more peculiar? But that... they're, they're, they're doing American accents, though. Right, but do you think that like, like if you're the creators of like, let's say Walking Dead and they're like, dude, it's so much cooler that Rick plays this sh- fucking poor white trash dude from Georgia. But when he gives interviews, he's like, hello, man. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know how to do this accent. Oh, but pretty it- good. Do it again. <laughs> hello, man. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> but I don't give a you fuck, dude, like if a you're pirate, offended. pirate, take it up the ass, bro. Right, yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been watching too many of those movies. Now, but, but you're, you're, you're right, dude. Do you think it's a gimmick that they're using? Or is it I, like, it's just, like these I, actors are that good? If I was a white American actor who was from the South... And I lost a role to an Australian guy to play a guy in the South. What's the point of acting? Right. Like, you you playing yourself got beat by a guy pretending to be you. Right. If you were a Southern guy, if you were like a Southern dude going up against, you were the last rounds of auditions with Rick, the guy who plays Rick. And you lost out to Rick, you have to quit. You have to be go be a dentist or something. I would have been like, I would have been outside the thing going, I don't get it. What I grew up saying happened? the N word. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I grew exactly. up I grew up I grew up saying the N word. This guy grew up saying bullocks and he right. got the role. Well, for you know, a southern guy. So so you know the guy who plays the um, sergeant in um in full metal jacket? The guy who plays the uh our, our, our Lee Ermey, who plays the... Well, he's a real... He was a, he's okay, a, so he he was only an advisor, and he kept going up to Francis Ford Coppola saying, like... Put me in the movie. Put me in the movie. <laughs> and, and Francis Ford Coppola... What a horrible extra he was. Fr- Francis Ford Coppola looked at him and said, it will never happen. And so he snuck into auditions and then got the audition and then got the role or something like that. But they didn't want him for Full the role. jacket? Yeah. That's um, Full Metal Jacket. I think it's that guy that's banned from America. No, it's uh, Francis Ford Coppola. No, it's um, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. S- that's right. It's Stanley Kubrick. It's my bad. But still, yeah, like Stanley Kubrick. Voice Kub- of God. Thank you. Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, seriously. I get the two of them mixed up. Francis Ford Coppola wrote The Godfather. Um, how, can you, how can you forget Francis Ford Coppola, bro? He's, bro, from, he's from your hometown, bro. I have Modesto. Dys- I have dyslexia. Is he from Modesto? I'm not from Modesto, by the way. I'm from San Jose. No, George Lucas is from in Modesto. George Lucas is from Modesto. But anyway, like he told him that he wasn't he he wasn't gonna get the role, and I kind of feel like as great of director as Stanley Kubrick is, well, he got it right. How stupid are you, bro, to not say, you, dude? Yes, this is, should be your role. You're an actor, and you have this experience. Here you go. But this is what Hollywood does, dude. We need a fucking. We need a guy, a Mexican guy. We need a guy to play a cholo, in fucking Training Day. What do we do? We hire a fucking guy from New Zealand. Yeah, Amari. Ah, oh, dude, this is good why actor, people get by the mad. Way. Great actor, bro. Great actor. I'm not trying to shit on him, but give jobs to Mexican people that have Mexican roles, please, for the love of God. Stop fucking. I feel like, bro, we're more ignored than anybody in the fucking film industry. Maybe Indian people, but that's it, bro. That re- was reminds me. Remember that old commercial? I think it's from the late 90s. What's up? Yeah. What's up? The Bud Light commercial, yeah. Yeah. That was, a, that was one of the first videos that went viral back before, t- with it, before anything was viral. Those guys were just a bunch of guys that were friends saying, What's up? to each other. Okay. Right? And it went viral. And then when they got the opportunity to do it as a commercial, they had to audition to play themselves. No. This is fucked up, bro. This is the shit that's fucked up. Why can't you have five black dudes, one light-skinned guy, play the, themselves? Ah, this is what makes me so mad. Like, go, okay, listen, man. If you can't find someone to fit the role of a gay black dude, Right, if you can't find any gay black dudes, then go find a straight guy who to play a gay black dude. But I guarantee you, there's fucking five thousand 
five hundred thousand gay black dudes trying to be actors. Yeah. Hire them first. Yeah, they even they never get the opportunity. Yeah, dude, it, it's crazy to me. Or like when they have to get when they have to pay a badass actor ten million. $40 million to play a guy in a wheelchair for three hours. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of actors already in wheelchairs, bro. Right. But they probably want somebody to share in their pants. I don't understand this, dude. <laughs> I don't know that we got to clean that up. Um, like, one time this happened to me. I got I got to um, a audition, and I had a friend who was one of the people that was running the audition, and he told me that I didn't get the role because I had too many tattoos. And it was for a fucking tattooed biker. It was for a tattooed biker. They fucking found a guy, they made him grow a beard, and then they fucking painted tattoos on him. Ridiculous. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? And it wasn't like, oh, I was a bad actor. It was no fucking lines. It was no fucking lines in the whole fucking movie this guy had. That uh, is crazy. Uh, it makes me so mad, dude. You know that movie that won, I don't know how many awards that movie won, Golden Globe or SAG Awards, um, Everywhere and Everywhere? Everywhere, how's that go? Every, Everything oh, yeah. and Everywhere All at Once? Yes. Well, I saw that movie, bro. What's that about? It sucked. I, I didn't like it. Either. Okay. And it won, I thought, a, lot, I thought won the, a lot of awards. I thought it was going to be more about Kung Fu, bro. Okay. I thought it would be, I swear to God, dog, when I saw that, when I saw the trailer... <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a a movie about that lady from um, from um, she's a, she's in that movie um, um, Hidden Dragon, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, yeah. right? So I was expecting her to come out with some kung fu futuristic shit, right. right? So it ended up being all in her head, bro. Her going crazy, right? Okay. So I don't know. I, I, it, it just that movie was not for Sucked. it's not for Sucked. me, man. Right. And I, and I and I watched it to support Asians, you know. Right, right, right. But right, Asian right. cinema, which I love, by the way, big yeah. fan of Asian cinema. Bruce Lee, uh, Crazy Rich Asians. I was just gonna say, Crazy Rich Asians did really well. Really well. Was badass. Was Anyways, that really a good movie? It's great movie. Um, and they're filthy rich. And um, sorry, my Trump is behind you. I'm getting, I'm getting hairy. <laughs> Dude, this plant keeps tickling my neck. And you know when you're sitting on the couch and you feel like you have a spider on your neck? That's what it keeps thinking. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. So the the guy that won uh, one of the the guy that won uh, the SAG, I don't know if he won the Golden Globe or the SAG Award, right? But uh, for best actor, Philip, he was a little kid that was in um that movie um Dr. Jones in uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, he was the little kid. Uh uh, he played, um, oh, he also was in Goonies. Yeah, him. Yeah, okay. He won the best actor. Who was right. his name in, in, in Goonies and in the, Data and Goonies, and then what was it in Indiana Jones? Short Round. Short Round, bro, racing names. <laughs> anyways, Data and ra and Short Round. Eh? <laughs> but anyways, so, so getting back to Chinese, one thing we didn't know back then um the oldest man in that fucking movie, he was the he was the the oldest Chinese guy. He's been in like two hundred, almost seven seven hundred something movies. Whoa! He's the guy that was in uh, Big Trouble in Little China, and he was in uh, oh the guy who plays um God, what's his name? Lopan. Yeah, Lopan, and he yeah, was okay. also in in um, Seinfeld as a as a waiter. He goes. Yeah. He goes, when George Costanza walks up to him and goes, you know, um, did anybody call George Costanza? Yes, Cartwright. I, uh, I yell out, Cartwright. Cartwright? Yeah. But my name is George Costanza. Yes, Cartwright Costanza. <laughs> so what happened? While you yell out, Cartwright Costanza, this lady say a curse word to me, I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember What's that. the name of the actor? Huh? James Hong. James Hong. His name is Jane Han. So this fool said that when he when um, they were accept they got the award for the best movie, he was speaking that he goes many many years ago. You know when he started acting because he was, he was in that movie. Um, he was in this old ass movie, bro. Like he's been acting forever, right? He said back then 
He goes, they, they were not hire Chinese. They were not hire no Asian. They said, Asian is not good enough. They will get American and put tape on the rice yeah. so it look like this and talk like a oh, what we're gonna Son do right here. Bitch, what we're gonna do right here. Right? right. So that's the way he did it, right? The, 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 the American actor will put tape right here. Right. Yeah. To t- make the rice look like that. John Wayne played a fucking Of Asian course dude, he did, bro. bro. He played Genghis Khan. Jesus Christ. Dude, this is the thing, is like it's like, okay, you go, well, those are different times. Yeah. And like fucking you know, that sucked and wasn't cool and we were a dumber country back then. But it still fucking happens, dog. Yeah, fucking uh, Brian Brando played, what's his name? That Mexican dude. Oh, yeah, he played Pancho Villa. Yeah. Dude, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. At, dude, especially at that time, when that was the most offensive to me because I did read that while we were going through everything. And I was like, this motherfucker, like, dude, these motherfuckers had the golden age of cinema right next door in Mexico. And they were pulling Mexican people for roles. But they were like, what about for Pancho Villa? Oh, we better go with a white dude just in case. Who the fuck is, dude, if someone's watching this that's fucking working in Hollywood or you know someone, fucking please fuck, I don't know, do something about this. This sucks, bro. It's, it makes me so angry how fucking you know, represented. You know what um what I what I learned from this is that you know how people say that oh he's a they're woke you know he's a woke crowd or right or you gotta you gotta say something so you won't offend these people, right? Mm-hmm. And they act like all oh, this is new stuff that's going on. This has been going on forever, like when like in real cinema, right? When they will show a show. With a with an interracial show like, like I Spy with Bill Cosby and the other act, white actor, when they would show that show in the South, they would show the billboard without Bill Cosby, because right. they didn't want to offend the South. And I'm like, and a lot, a lot of people say that, um, oh, let's go back to the old days when nobody would get offended. No, man, in the old days, people were more offended. Uh, you know, when they say that this, right? I love comedy. That was, comedy was in the old days. You know. They were doing real film because nobody was really getting offended. Man, people been getting offended yes. in America since the beginning of time. Before, beginning with Elvis Presley. Oh, man, the way he moves with hips, that's offensive. He's doing black music. Right, right. Well, I right now people, the, thing, I, the, the running thing is, is like, oh, like, you know, you'll watch a commercial and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's two black dudes and they're gay, you know, and it's for like butter or it's like a, a, a black and white couple you know, and they're like, oh, they're shoving it down our throats. That's and what I, I know that commercial. It's two black dudes holding hands, and one guy has braids, and they're by the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they think that everybody that has HIV goes to the beach. Or canoes. It, no, oh, people I, who I, have herpes canoe. I mean, like, for real. No, people with, yeah. uh, and then people with uh, menstrual problems go skiing all of a sudden. Right. Suck up all that ice. <laughs> Like, like, they do a lot of aerobics, but it, those, but it goes yeah, back to what we're, where they're stretching their pussy. But this goes back to what we're talking <laughs> about commercial. Remember in the beginning of um, ep- uh, Latin Cinema episode two, we we're talking about remember where, how every time they would show like a, a Mercedes back in the days, or even now they would show a, like a Mercedes commercial. Yeah, and there's a white rich man with a suit riding right, it. Right, and they'll show um, uh, a real estate house, you know. They'll show a white man or Crest commercial, a white man, Tide commercial, a white man. Right. But then they'll talk about um, or white lady. if you've ever been hurt at work and it's a, a, a Mexican with a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been wrongfully accused at your job and there's a brother like this at, at his job saying, I didn't steal shit. Right, yeah. Well, you, you know. Do you, you need a loan? You want to sell your gold? Yeah. What do you think? Man. Those are like commercials that come on late at night. They, and it's like, oh, they they're sw- aimed at someone. I know uh, commercials or, or people advertisers. They swear, they they swear that black, Mexicans, Chinese, poor white people, anybody, people of color, anybody who's poor has gold hiding somewhere. Right, right. 
I mean, if we, we, do, do you we think do. they do hide? <laughs> where, where, I have no gold, dog. Yeah, my mom hides. Dude, when my mom died, we found gold everywhere. <laughs> this is all leading into the pirates, by the way. <laughs> that lady was a pirate herself. Um, so your mom had a lot of gold medallions. My grandma yeah, had medallions. Yeah, like, dude, we would go like, it, like we when we were like, because when we were giving clothes to the fucking uh, Salvation Army, m- my sister came running in. She goes. Don't forget, mom hid shit in her jacket pockets. And then all her jacket pockets were like little medallions or like necklaces. Like all gold. All gold. And then same with my grandmother. Like she had gold all over the house because to her it was like, I'm, this is where I'm investing my money. You know, because for four poor people it was. The crazy one to me was late night commercials for like Everest College. And it's like some black dude that's like, gonna be a mechanic or some mexican chick who's gonna be a nurse a nurse's assistant and it's like she's the single mom and she's like if it wasn't for everest online classes i wouldn't be able to like be a nurse's assistant (laughs) and it's like like dude like who oh i wonder if they picked this person particular you got to remember they auditioned person after person after person and they're probably going she doesn't look poor enough. She doesn't look Mexican Imagine. Enough. Like, we need someone to, like, look like, you know, like this average person, this demographic. It's weird because it's racist. It's stereotypical. Sometimes well-targeted. Like, yeah, dude. Poor people from other countries and the generations that came after them hid gold. Because it was the only and way. And the Jewish people will, sw- will swallow it during the Holocaust. Well, because if you're a Mexican lady, bro... And you're a single mom, and back in the day when banks weren't fucking regulated, and you had like 5000 which was a lot of money, stored up in a bank, and the bank decides to keep it, you're fucked. Because you're a Mexican lady, what are, they gonna, what are you going to fucking do? You know? So it's like you hide gold. Gold always kept its stand. We always, you know, for the longest time, we were off the gold standard. So it's, fu- it's fucked up how racist Hollywood is, but it's... Hollywood is only a echo of our own society, I feel like. Holy shit, that got deep. Sorry. <laughs> That's light like information to I'm digest. I'm fucking angry. I'm fucking mad right now. But getting back to these old ads. Right. Do you remember, like, um, I'm, I'm older than you, but you remember the ads for uh, drug abuse? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. And a lot clearly. of But a lot of them, like, I remember, bro, big. Like I guess when um, when I was a kid, DUI was no big deal, right? So white teenagers started killing each other, right. you know, before the prom, and uh, they were selling less tuxedos back then. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's to sell black suits. It was like DUI commercial, tux commercial. Yeah. So there was, a, I wanted to <coughs> laugh because I remember this this commercial for alcoholism. It's, it was called um, Chic C H. I C K, chick. It was like an uh, it was like a, a alcoholic. It was like a rehab. Okay. Joint chick, whatever, right? Oh. And um, so this is like not out like a like outside A A branch or something. Yeah, like it was like a, a it was like an alcoholism rehab place or just anti alcohol place. You know, just stop drinking. You know, being an alcoholic. Right. So, dude, it was very graphic, bro. It it shows this white man. Kicking down his door, and then his his um his kids are all scared like tears in the bedroom. You know you can see them with a teddy bear. Right. And then the mom is all scared, and then she's on the floor all scared. Oh, I do remember. And this fool's all drug. He 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 like unloosing up his tie. He goes looks down at her. He goes ah the little woman. I remember this commercial, bro. It was for like rehab centers or something like that, right? Yeah. To this day, bro, I always laughing at that part. That, the little I woman. That, dude. Cause there was other abusive stuff in that commercial, but right. that part where you just unloosen his tie. He's all and disgusted. And his by wife's her. all scared. He goes, the yeah. little woman. <laughs> like he's gonna whip her or something. Yeah, I remember. Uh, and the dude. other one was um another one was um <laughs> it it shows off. He goes, it shows off. It starts off with a kid running like a race, right? And it, it goes, but then it ends with the cops chasing him. 
Nobody says I want to grow up to be a drug addict. Yes. <laughs> yes. Holy shit, dude. Yes. None of those commercials helped me, bro. None of them. All of them made me want to do drugs. All of them made me like, I was like, that looks like that's, oh, that's how you get into that, that career. Like, like, I remember, I remember totally, like we had this thing called Quest. And it was a class that you had to take when you were in the seventh grade. And it talked about sex and drugs and all that stuff. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, and they brought in the people that were former drug addicts. Yeah. And they had the case. Do you remember the case with all the different types no. of drugs? It had like a joint. It had like balloons. It had a syringe. had a spoon. It, had, it was this glass case with all these different types of drugs you could do to fuck you up. But they point. They would always talk about what weed first, because remember they were trying to push yeah. that weed was this drug that got you into other drugs, and like they. Then I remember the girl talking about the first time she got high, and how it felt, and all I could. Br immediately, my mind went to, I cannot fucking wait to try drugs, like I can't wait to get high. And then the first time I got high, I was like, it's everything that girl said. And and then, but I never did. Well, okay, I did other drugs, but then I stopped. But yeah, D D Dare did nothing for me except make me want to do drugs. Thanks, Dare. Dare, drugs are real expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that before. That's fucking good. Yeah, man, it was a lot of um, big campaign back then, huh? And they all had colored people in the in the ads. I almost the old, when you saw when it was just the alcoholic one man with the abusive abusive alcoholic dads or the white white dudes. I was gonna say it was always a white always dude, white dude. In, a, in a tie. Do you remember the ones where it was like a little girl going when daddy comes home, we need to leave the room, and it was always like uh, like a uh, like her like. Her explaining her drunk but dad coming the, home. The abusive white dad up. always had a suit, like he didn't make enough sales. <laughs> and the tie was always loosened, and his cuffs were rolled up. Yeah, dude. And then this, I, and then it, it was like it would show two he glasses like, smashing together. He was like low men, they death of a salesman. Yeah. <laughs> like. Shh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that was the thing too. Was like, what's funny is, is that my dad came home in a suit and tie when I was a kid. All the time. What did he do, bro? He was um, a business uh, consultant. Like he helped people get, uh, start their own businesses because he had started his own business. And the funny thing was, is they were like all these things at school would tell us if what you were as an alcoholic. My dad never hit. My dad never showed that he was drunk. He never stumbled around the house. He never came home with his tie loosened up and. Yelling at God forbid he yelled at my mom, she'd beat the fuck out of him. Um, but he might, but but all the other things was like, D Does your dad drink every day? Yes, does your dad drink on the weekends? Yes, does your dad drink before bed? Yes, and I was like, Oh, dude, my dad's an alcoholic, but, but he's not a dick. My dad will pass out, bro, and all my, it was like seven kids, bro. We'll go through his pockets, bro, like like orphans in 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 London in 1690. Was he that passed out, really? That's fucking hilarious, dude. Then my, my dad wake up all loaded, and he wanted to make him food, so we make a quesadilla full of hot sauce. Jesus Christ! And you guys would just fuck with him, and then he'd get mad. Nah, he didn't too loaded. Eh? He was too loaded. Was it like better when he was loaded or worse? I don't know. They're all both worse. Really? Yeah, because that's because yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. It's fucking commercials, bro. Fucking racist. What about Frito Bandito? Someone did actually say something in the comments. Speeding Gonzalez and Frito Bandito were my TV role models when I was a little chavalito. My two favorite Rasa movies: Salt of the Earth and Salt the, of the Earth and the Milagro Beanfield War. I fucking forgot about that movie too. I never seen that one. I never seen Salt of the Earth. I don't even know what that is. 1954. But I remember Frito. I don't remember Frito the Bandito. I remember hearing about it because I was too small. But that was like super fucking racist. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that at all? The Milagro Beanfield. No, Frito Bandito. The character. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the character. Uh, I met him before. His name is Avery Schreiber. Get out of here. There was yeah. an actual character. Yeah, it, the, the Speedo Bandito yeah. character. Well, maybe who the Frito Bandito for the Dorito Fritos. Yeah? Yeah, wow. His name was Avery Schreiber. He was, a, he, was a, he was an original 
uh, Second City TV, Second City comedian. Okay. He had curly hair. He was known for his curly hair and little mustache. And he had the Avery Schreiber Theater in the Valley. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember I did a joke that was kind of hacky. I said, yeah, I put tarnish remover on my grandmother. She looks 50 years younger now. Tarnish remover. Oh. <laughs> like she, yeah. yeah. That was a, but come on, man. He said that's a great joke, but that's coming from Frito Bandito, bro. <laughs> what is he, like 80 now? Is he no, He alive? passed away already. He passed away. Okay. Because that was like in the 70s, right? 70s, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Um... There was all kinds of fucking, like, I mean, all the way up until, I don't know, now. I mean, you could think of things where it's like, that's kind of fucking racist. But, like, I do remember the 80s. But it's funny when, like, when you watch it done right, it doesn't feel racist. No. Like, blood in, blood out. Was people blood in, blood out, though, racist? People say, it's, not, it's not racist at all. Right. Even, even, when big, even when Big Al goes, hey... Right. Sorry, we have not our hands. But it's racist. It's funny because that white dude is really trying to be an asshole and funny. He's being racist. Yeah. And he's, funny. Right. But the way he did it with the accent, it makes it funny, bro. Right. Well, and that's the thing, man, is like... Um, I don't know if Big Al goes to Comic-Con, but I'm pretty sure the Cholo stand in line, bro. I feel like it's hard for Hollywood to figure it out because... But you know what was racist and wrong? What? When you watch the old 21 Jump Streets yes. with Johnny Depp, yes. and they got thugs, they got cholos, and they're right. played by non-cholos right. with long hair, yes. and they got Pendletons that you would never seen cholo wear those Pendletons that are green and yellow and orange. And it also play, takes place in New York, which there's no... Is there, was there cholos in New York? Hell no. Nah. And they'll be like this. And they'll, talk, they'll say like this. They'll have their hair like this. Hey, Carnell. Right. <laughs> it wasn't until the Hollywood started using real thugs like we Emilio don't Rivera, it. Emilio Rivera, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Noel like, okay. G, right. and um, the guy from New Zealand. That you started What's the guy from New Zealand? That it, uh, his name is um, that guy. Can't remember his name. Cliff. Clifton something. Yeah. Clifton Collins. Clifton Collins. No, Clifton Collins, the guy we're talking about. That uh, was the guy that, oh, that's right. That's right. He changed his name. Um, but I will say the dude from New Zealand is, I'll, I'll, I'll give him props because he does play a good Mexican. Like it, What? Cliff Curtis, that's what it is. Cliff Curtis, bro, I told you. Cliff Curtis you plays a listen. good. He does play good Mexican in training day. He's he's. <laughs> he just. I don't some people are, are just great, but if you play a, a, he's a great actor, great actor, Cliff Curtis. So he, you know, he, he gets a pass from me, right? Because he played him a good. You know, he he, he, he played him good, but. John Wayne, man, playing Chinese guy. Oh, fuck I you. forget about it, dog. Right. Can you think of anybody modern right now that played a Mexican that's not Mexican? Will Ferrell. Did he really? And that movie is funny, though. He, and he spoke Spanish through the whole movie. Have you ever seen that movie with, um, what's his name? The guy who plays Batman. Christian uh, Bale. Christian Bale. It's in L.A. And they kill Emilio in a bar? Yes. It's a good movie. Yes. Hard times. Hard times. It's a good movie. I know white dudes like that. I felt like that movie was super fucking accurate because I knew white dudes like you that. You know the the director of that movie? He grew up in um, Dayton where Lisa grew up. Oh, really? And okay. uh, he was raised by Mexicans. He was he, he ran away from home and moved to LA and he right. lived with Mexicans. So right. he knows the hood, right. that guy. And also, I think he wrote Training Day. Okay. David, David Ayer. Ayer. They Ayer knows. Okay. Yeah, he's from Florida. So, so David, he knows the hood. Because, like, that character. David Ayer. That character that Christian Bale plays, you get the feeling that he grew up in, like, East L.A. or grew up around yeah. Mexican people, right? 
and I know white dudes that did like grow up in Mexican neighborhoods that were like just like that guy, bro. Like I felt that movie was super. It's one of the most accurate movies of depicting people from the hood and stuff like that. You know what I hate though? What? You know, uh, I saw the movie. Maybe Phil have seen it, and more like his era, his age. This fucking movie, bro. Right? <coughs> These hot Beverly Hills type bitches. They hook up with these cholos and bring them to Beverly Hills, which never happens. Huh? No, not What's Up Rockers. Another one. but What's Up Rockers? That's a Gus Van Sant movie, right? Larry Clark? This is a, this is a movie that Philip reminded me right now. It's called by Larry Clark, which shows all Mexicans in it. But Mexican with long hair who likes to skate. It's called What's Up Rockers? Never heard of it. Or check it out afterwards. Eh? And they, they pick up cholos and take them back. No, they hook up with these rich white chicks. Yeah. Oh, Harmony. Uh, Larry, oh, okay. Yeah, Larry Clark, he did um, Kids, and he did that movie, What's Up, Rockers? Go check it out. And um, so this I saw this other movie, bro. And I think that girl, anyways, that girl's in it, man. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. She played Catwoman in one of the Batman movies. What's her name? Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. When she was a younger chick, she they, she hooks up with a bunch of cholos. I remember that in a movie somewhere. But that never happened in real life, right? No. Uh, not until we're older. Some like Anne Hathaway, bro. bro. Like, no. It doesn't happen until we're older and we move to like... And we ain't done. We moved to like Vacaville and we meet some girl that like came home from school. Like maybe, you know. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Oh yeah, man. Or like My girl's from Walnut Creek, so Or they're just like so, sometimes like you like in a movie, like there's a there's a Chicano Cholo that happens to be somewhere for no reason. Like that Cholo man and Chappie. Yes, and okay. I, I know the guy. That's a, those are real guys. Like but, that no, but the that. Mexican dude I know. Yeah, the actor that plays that character in that movie, he's in. A, he, he was at a. We were at a blood drive. I was at. He's actually a good actor, but, but um, I, I wanted to know, man, how a Mexican fool ended up in South Africa. I feel like those are accurate. That's an accurate thing, though. Because maybe because like, he let he he got the poor, Maybe he was a DJ who ended up staying over there, huh? He probably like in in my mind when I saw that it was like he robbed a bank and he couldn't come back to America because it got bloody, and so he made South America South Africa is one of the one of those Open countries season, that doesn't huh? uh, extradite, like. They don't have money to extradite. I also thought um, too that he was probably like in the army or something, or or, or just a thug right. that ended up being over there because he's a DJ or whatever. Well, there's the a life. real there's a real story of this one guy, and I wish they would make a fucking movie about him. I saw a Vice episode on it years ago, and I think he's probably dead by now. I'm pretty sure he's dead. He killed him. So they deported this dude out of Stockton that was like a hardcore fucking. This was before the Dreamer shit happened. He was this hardcore fucking cholo from Stockton. He had a couple of murders on his head that they couldn't pin him for, so they fucking um, deported him. And when he got to the town that he was from in Mexico, it was overran by uh, cartel members. So he started killing cartel people. And he kind of roamed this area for a while killing cartel people. And he was like a, was just a gang member from Stockton who became like a vigilante in fucking Mexico. Interesting. And I think they should make a fucking story about that guy. I'll try to find the story and you guys could put it on the on the descript or something. But man, what a good fucking story that one is. I wish we knew more about that guy. Yeah, I definitely wish we knew more about that guy. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, there's uh I think there's all kinds of guys um it, like that are like versions of that guy where they they commit crimes and they have to leave because Mexico will extradite you. If you flee to Mexico, they'll fucking send you back here to to to, to stand trial. But I don't think they'll send you back if you're going to be charged and sentenced to death. That's right. I think you're, you're right about that. Even if you're even if you were born in America, well, if you're born in America, they'll take you anyways, huh? 
I don't know, but remember when they had Dog the Bounty Hunter for yeah. a while? They kept him and then they extradited and him? And then they, they, they arrested uh, Dog Man for kidnapping because there's no such thing as bounty hunting in, in That's Mexico. That's right. That's what it was. But he had to serve time here for something. Yeah. And and they they would they we had to get him extra I don't remember the exact fucking thing, so I don't even know what I'm fucking talking about. Can we get to the subject right now, man? Yeah. What's what's the obsession with not I mean I know there's a history for food podcast. Sure. We and we're doing Latin whatever. cinema podcast, bro. Right. And we got fifteen minutes left. Okay. What's the what's with um and I and I would say it's only white podcasters? Why do they act to, do they have to believe that every pyramid in the world was made by UFOs and not by the brown people that were living there? Because that's the fucking idealistic world that we live in. There's no possible way that these fucking prehistoric fucking brown people who fucking have a third world country right now could have ever built something so amazing, you know, with the help of, without the help of white ingenuity. You know, and that's that's the, that dude. That's such a big thing that everybody fucking overlooks. That is crazy to me. It couldn't be. It couldn't be just fucking uh, something that we don't know about that disappeared long ago. I don't know. You, you hear these podcasts? He goes, "Yeah, these people thousands of years ago." No, bro. These people have names. Well, you know how much I like UFO stuff, but at the same time, I definitely go, "Yeah, what the fuck." You know, because I, I, when it comes to the pyramids, I really think we're humans. missing a lot of explanations that are that are that are that come way before fucking uh, aliens and stuff like that. But this is part of that as well. This is part of that whole thing in Hollywood, man. Because there's never they're, again, we're you know, you see alien, ancient aliens. That guy with the fucking hair, he's never like, yeah, it could be, it, it could be brown people. It could be that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Egyptians hired a bunch of Mexicans? Like, Harrison, like Harrison Ford, bro. He thinks the only he has the, he has the fastest ship. Get the fuck out of here, right, right dude? <laughs> the fuck out of here with, <laughs> with your fake ass speed, right? Nobody ever qu- questioned his ass, bro. So that's the thing, man. I think it's a lot of it <laughs> with people. That's pretty good, bro. Is that pre- I used to do you should better. really grow back the. F- you should really grow back all the rest of the fur. <laughs> then for Halloween we could be uh, we could be chewy and. Uh, I'll be solo. I'll be a fat ass Yoda. <laughs> what happened to Yoda? Oh, bro, I didn't die after all. Right. <laughs> You don't lift ships no more? Man, I lift myself. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's I, weird, like, when you think about, like, just say, like, uh, like I'm, I'm going to name a, 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 a characters in movies. Okay. And, and automatically in your head, you're probably going to think white dude to play, even though you're not casting a movie. Okay. Wizard. White dude, yeah. Sorcerer. White dude. Um, God. <laughs> no. Yeah. Why is that in my head? Why can't it be a black dude or an Asian dude? Why is that in my head, bro? It did. It Can popped up as a white dude. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me put on my sarape, bro. Okay. Because you've been colonized, homie. <laughs> That's why I'm white. I'm going to give you a new, different one, bro. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. (laughs) You said savage. (laughs) Colonizer. Colonizer. (laughs) White white dudes with hats. (laughs) But I'm not going to tell you what came into my mind when you said savage, okay? But... It's not fair. It wasn't fair. You're right. I was honestly, I was thinking like guy, like, like the you guy who I, plays tattoo. You know in what? Like it, a tunic. You know what? It came to me right now. Why it came to me right now? Because, because I was thinking about. <coughs> no, we're thinking about Latin cinema. Right. And if we're thinking 
like in my head, I'm thinking about a wizard. Of course, a white dude. Right. Because, you know, every if you go to every book, every movie, white dudes always been wizards. And then, like, there's KKK, the, one, the Grand Wizards. Right. Well, there's the one black dude in Never Ending Story that's a wizard. And then, and then when they, and then the Wizard of Oz, the black version, he just can't be the Wizard of Oz. He gotta be the Wiz. <laughs> ha! Fuck, dude! <laughs> Why couldn't we just stick to normal stuff? He just can't go on. He just, he can't go on. He can't. He can't just follow the yellow big road. He has to ease on down. <laughs> ease on down the road. Ease on down, ease on down the road. Ah, <laughs> uh, why couldn't he have been the wizard, dude? It sucks, man. Doris is looking for her parents and the other one. Right. Nah, have you she... seen? I've never seen. Uh, I saw the. I saw the, the. I what saw the. The, the Wiz. Is that what it's called? The Wiz. The Wiz. I saw the Wiz, and uh, my my high school play, my high school musical. They did it, bro. The Wiz, and it was probably the best fucking production I ever seen in my life. Oh uh, man, cause my friend he played the he played the lion and he threw a lot of break dancing in it, you know. So it was right. tight. Right. Oh, I did go to a play when I was a kid. The, the Wiz is um, Diana Ross plays Dorothy and Joe Michael Jackson's in Michael it. Michael Jackson plays the lion. Right. And then the Tin Man is played by um, Magic Johnson. What? Michael Jackson's the scarecrow. A badass scarecrow. Nipsey Russell, Nipsey Russell, a Tin Man. Okay. The Lion is um. Fred Red Sanford and Son. Is it really? No. Uh, Let me that up. <laughs> I went. My mom took me to the play when I was a kid. I didn't want to go, so she told me that Michael Jackson was in it. And when I got there. And Michael Jackson wasn't in it. I was like, "Fuck this play." So that's 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 my extent with that. I, but you're right. It is it is a typecasting when it comes to wizards, magicians, uh, witch, witches are white ladies. Well, witches are green now, right? Yeah, because of Wizard of Oz, which isn't fair to green people. It's not fair, man. How about Martians? They Martians as well. If if Martians are real, what color are they? Yellow. I would say purple. Purple. But I don't know. But if they, if they were real, they would they would have to be the color of whatever <laughs> sun they have. If you're gonna cast a Martian, what race would you cast him? Armenian. Here? Armenian. Why Armenian? Because they were, because they they've been kicked out of their of this country already, of oh, their country, two countries. They have been kicked out of this country. They got kicked out of the, the they're in the Armenian Empire. <laughs> right. The Armenian, the, the, that was World War One. That's what the the, the, the Ottoman Empire right. killed them. That's what Hitler said before he started the genocide. He goes, nobody remembers the Armenian one. Nobody does remember the Armenian. Remember so we that's where he said that one. Where did we go? Was it Philly where we saw the? Uh, the memorial for the Armenian genocide. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy, dude. I didn't know about that either until yeah, I, I worked with you this, told me about that. I worked with a Serbian comedian. His name is Alvis something, and then he he has a he has a genocide joke. He goes, they asked me, my friend, no matter which side am I on, Croatia, it's the Serb side or the Croatian side? I chose the one with no genocide. <laughs> What's his name? Alvis something. Fuck, dude. Oh, this, this comedian, he um, performs out of a van. He lives out of a van. So he, he has a van. Like and he, comfortably or like homelessly? I don't know how comfortable anybody could be. Any human being could be in a van, bro. Right. And how do you hook up after the show? Listen, man, can you uh, move your head away from my speakers? Yeah, exactly, dude. So this dude, this dude has a van. And in his van, he has a big speaker and a microphone. And he goes to like a bar and he goes, hey man, can I do stand up comedy on Tuesday? And then he goes, yeah, what time? Eight o'clock. I'll just show up, I'll set it up, and I'll just do stand up. And he put a little, a little collection probably. I don't know what he does. 
but he does it all week in that town. And then I guess he gives the money to the homeless or how or he, he does. And then he, then um, during the daytime he goes to shows at the at the soup kitchens wherever they perf- feed him. Yeah. And he goes up, hey man, would you do some stand up? He does stand up for them. Anyway, that's his thing, bro. Give the food a guest spot and all the food we had. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll- and we're back. What's up, bro? What's up? History for Fools. History for Fools, Latin cinema rapper. How did you like working on this project? I liked it. Like most, I, I learned a lot. I have a, a lot did of you knowledge. Learn a lot? I, I think that's the thing is that we come away learning a lot. Yeah, and um, when I was at, I was on the. I was on the Adam Carolla podcast. Nice. Oh, did you talk about us on the Adam Carolla podcast? Yes, because um, they were talking about. Fuck um, yeah. They were talking about um, David Letterman. Not David Letterman. Um, what's his name? Um, Bob Weinstein. Okay. What's his name? Oh, Bob Einstein. Bob Einstein. Yeah, Bob Einstein. And Super then, Dave. Yeah, Super Dave. Uh, um, and then his how his dad. Yeah, we're talking about. Oh, su- you're talking about the roaster stuff. We're talking about Super Dave. Right. Okay. And then like, and then like they mentioned such and such, and then Albert Brooks, and then I said that um, I had a meeting with Albert Brooks and Louis C.K. and Greg Daniels, and then um, Norm McDonald asked me. Not Norm McDonald. Um, Adam Carolla asked me. So how did that meeting go? Everything was going great, man. So they started masturbating on me. <laughs> And all the crew laughed, and then Adam Carolla just looked at me with a straight face. But we're talking, we're started talking about um, Super Dave, right? And Albert Brooks. Then I said, yes, their father was a comedian, and, uh, and then somebody in the back said, yeah, 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 and then Adam Carolla said, yeah, his father had a heart attack. I said, yes, it was during a roast. Right. His, his father had a, a name. That a lot of comedians had gimmick name. His name was Parker Carcass. Yeah. Hey, how did you know that? And I said, well, my friend Butch and I, Escobar, we do a podcast called yeah. History for Fools. And we mentioned History for Comedy, baby. What up? Hell yeah, doggy. Park your carcass. Park your carcass. Yeah, dude. Um, we get a lot of requests for stuff to talk about. But like I said, man, um, if you want to donate to um, Butch's uh, pal, pal, PayPal, what is it, bro? PayPal. At Butch Escobar. At Butch Escobar on PayPal? On Venmo. On Venmo. You could send him um, gas money and money to get more books. Yes. He, he, he's, trying to, he's trying to get a new Bible. Yeah, we need a new comedy Bible. For the next... Uh, uh, look at... If you guys want to, if you guys donate to um, Butch's page, I write on, I write on like old cardboard and bags. <laughs> if you guys want to donate to Butch's PayPal... And um, the and, and you get and uh, Venmo, and the person who donates the most, you could donate and add a subject, and the next comedy Bible he has, whether whatever subject it is, th- like this one is comedy, the next one will be pirates, one is Latin cinema. Yeah, he'll he'll ship it to I'll you, and, you. and you keep the yeah, notes. Yeah, hell yeah, and you get to pick the subject. And you so, get to pick the subject. So yeah, um, wow, thanks. Cause uh, man, remember um. Uh, when we're talking about um, Latin cinema, what I learned was a lot about um, film, right? And how you know, just just uh, the, the any 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 type of form of entertainment that comes up, whether it's film, whether it's TikTok, whether, whether it's rock and roll music, there's always a backlash from somebody. You know that it's just a devil, right? They've been a devil for a lot of stuff. The devil gets credit for a lot of inventions, by the way. Lots of inventions. Hey, the phone, the devil. Right. Mass, mass communication, the devil. Well, we go back to when we the were... The devil's a very talented guy. When we go back to the history of comedy, remember they were like trying to say that uh, radio was the devil, that radio was like bad and like and you're allowing evil spirits to come through your home through, through the wires because... The, it was a big campaign by the theaters to like uh, to get rid of radio so that theaters could keep sourcing entertainment. I, I hear when people say that uh, the reason that person was successful because he sold his soul to the devil. Right. Whatever the wh- wh- where's all the bad stories that day. Eh? Right. People who sold their devil, sold their soul to the devil, and nothing happened. And it didn't work out. 
I think that's more the case. I don't believe in that stuff, but if if I did, I feel like selling yourself to the devil is like doing fucking heroin or fucking hurting kids and shit like that. I don't think you can sell your soul to a devil because, like, really? You're that valuable? Yeah, the devil's all. No thanks. No thanks. Hey. He's like, hey, listen, bro. You're special. I'm already going to get you. I need soldiers. <laughs> I don't need weak people. I need soldiers. Yeah, exactly. I need Hitler. <laughs> I need a leader. I need a Donald J. Trump. I need momentum. <laughs> I need that with Presley. <clears throat> Man, so um, we just got back from, um, where were we at? We were just, uh, we did Laughlin and Denver, which was Denver, both sold out. Fucking Denver Remember last week, was yeah. amazing. This last time we were in North Carolina at the Carolina Theater. And uh, all trips were amazing. We were, we were, were in um, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, Durham, North Carolina. Which is smaller than Charlotte. Yes. That's right. We did Durham. Did I say Charlotte? My bad. We were in Charlotte, though. We did Charlotte. I'll tell you what, man, and I, I, I love it, man, Like, because I love this podcast. For me, this is my baby. You know, when he, when we get a subject and he's like, okay, we'll, we'll agree on that, Like, I dig up as much as I can, and it's a lot of fucking work. So when you guys, I'll tell you the biggest payoff is when you guys come up and go, I watch the podcast, I love you guys. Like, that's the best fucking feeling in the world. So please keep coming up to us and telling us that. Also, um, subscribe to the podcast. Yes, please. And um, leave, as, uh, leave as many comments as you want on our podcast. Also, if you could, um, if you want to cut and clip and share it, fine with us. Um, just yeah. remember to put What's the History for Food podcast. Also, uh, follow us on Instagram, Felipe Esparza the Comedian. Um, I don't know when this comes out. But October 7, I'll be in downtown Los Angeles. Anything to say? Um, man, follow me on Instagram and keep supporting us, guys. Like, keep watching and thanks for the love. That's all I got to say. This is fucking fun. Also, get ready for the next episode, which will be the history of um, pirates. Yeah. Arr. The next few episodes are going to be uh, history of pirates, which is my favorite subject in the whole fucking you world. You know how much a, a, a pirate pays for corn? Uh, no. A buccaneer. Jesus Christ, bro. All, All right, right, man. I'm fucking out of here, dude. <laughs> Get me out of here. Ahoy, matey. Ahoy, matey. Ah!